Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up? Cool. All right. Uh, start from the back. Yes? Awesome. Cool. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ben Actus. You can follow me on Twitter at, at BenRaw. This is the 20-minute edition of uh, IoT Pressure Cooker, What Could Go Wrong? Uh, I'm giving a 60-minute one in Austin, uh, besides Austin, next week. So thanks for coming, by the way. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, about me, motivation, uh, how it should work, uh, all the things wrong with it or part of it, and then uh, I have a demo video because I didn't want to bring the thing on the flight. So, Okay, who am I? Uh, I started at MITRE in the area here, phenomenal FFRDC. I did a bunch of mobile reversing there. I built a lot of network sensors. There is a really great website called opensecuritytraining.info. If you want to see me with hair teaching about uh, NetFlow analytics and hunting, that's up there too. Then I went to Lookout in San Francisco, which was an absolute blast. I got to tear apart Android and iOS malware all day. Uh, and most recently, I'm at Synac. And for those that don't know, Synac is like a combination uh, bug bounty program, Volan scanner. And what I do is I build all the mobile attacking tools, which you'll see from the talk. Uh, so what we do is I uh, all the tools that how do you at scale reverse, statically look for volans, and dynamically look, look for volans. And I also tear apart a lot of IoT devices before they come to market, too. Uh, at night, I'm a troll on Twitter. I do own a side business called Cyber Merchants of Death. So if you want training in any of these things, come talk to me after the talk. So. All right, uh, my work did fly me out here, so I'm going to do a quick pitch. Uh, if you like bug bounties, if you like attacking mobile apps, web apps, hosts, go sign up. Uh, bug bounties, we pay them. Uh, only difference is we do a kind of little technical assessment. So if you say you know how to hack web apps before we let you touch a customer's uh, web app infrastructure, we make sure you know your stuff. Uh, it's a smaller crowd. And what I like is the payouts are really fast because it's only one group of people vetting them. And uh, because of that, it's a smaller kind of uh, competition circle. So please go check it out if you like this stuff, especially students in the audience, too. OK, how did this come from? Who's heard of the Internet of Shit Twitter account? couple people. <laughs> so this really was the, the inspiration. Um, I saw this on Twitter, and I'm like, this is funny. And uh, I don't know if you can see in the bottom, but someone made a funny little dad joke that basically said, is the next like IoT botnet going to be a potnet? And uh, I liked it, right? Yeah. Um, so I started looking at it. And this is literally five minute findings. Like I'm not exaggerating this. So within five minutes, I just started grepping around in the mobile app. And I saw they're sending things over HTTP. And I'm like, that's weird. What are they downloading? And they're downloading these dot cooker files. And don't worry, I explain how all this stuff works. And I'm like, huh, what's a dot cooker file? So I unzipped it. It's just a zip file. And it has these like weird binary values. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. It also stores all of them on world readable, <laughs> world writable storage directory on Android, which could be bad. Uh, so anyway, I sent my boss an email, and I was like, Patrick, plain text communication sends executable code, stores executable code in a directory anyone can touch. Pretty sure I give a talk on this. Can I buy it? And he's like, absolutely. This will be fun. So like any good uh, security researcher person, uh, we sent a disclosure letter. So here's my company letterhead. Uh, I talked to legal, and I wrote a letter, and I was like, hey. Uh, dear Instapot, you have an application, uh, an IoT app. You send data insecurely. You store data insecurely. And we're pretty sure we can modify temperature, heating, and timing, and pressure remotely. Right. And they don't really have like a security team. So I sent it to like the general help desk queue. <laughs> oh, it gets better, guys. Um, so it sat there for 20 days. And oh, also we said, like, if you don't respond in 60 days, we can go public. Right. So uh, sat there for 20 days, and then Nancy S. closed it without saying anything. So uh, I went to like, our attorney, and I was like, what do I do? And he's like, oh, ping him again. I'm like, OK. So I opened it up, and I was like, you still haven't patched it. And like, as a week ago, it's still not patched, if you want to play with this later. Um, and Nancy closed it the next day without saying anything. So right, here's a talk. <laughs> Regular use cases. So it's pretty simple. The idea is you like unbox this big pressure cooker. Um, you sync over Bluetooth low energy. Then you launch your little mobile app. Uh, you select a recipe. <laughs> right? I like gifts in case anyone couldn't tell. Uh, you wait. And then you eat some yummy food. Right? And like the product's cool, just they built it really bad. Right? 
Uh, oh, thank you. So, weird things. I've reversed thousands of apps, no exaggeration. I've never found a Mandarin poem unused in a code base before. <laughs> so I'm like, what does this mean? So I threw it in Google Translate, and it's like kind of sweet. It's a little kind of like emo and depressing, but it's like it, I thought it was cute. So um, no security volume here. I just thought it was funny. Uh, other bad things. Uh, yes, this is what do you think it is? So there were so in Android you have like a slash assets folder, and that's like images. Uh, I don't know graphics things you use sometimes, right? They have all these uh, XML uh, key pair mappings of the actual integer binary value you send over blue uh, Bluetooth low energy to control things like heating gear elements. This is probably bad. And if it's unclear, yes, they definitely outsource to some Asian company to actually do the code base. Um, they also have the pressure state values in there too. Um, so we'll get into this, why this is bad later. So my goal is I just want to be able to break everything. So I uh, looked at a lot of the code and we're going to dive into that. So the first question is those like binary files. Remember the dot cooker, aka zip files. I unzip those, and I had to understand how to parse that. So the plan was I have to figure out what, how each binary weird hex name file name corresponds to an actual uh, recipe file, and then I had to map out what those values mean. So this is O one O editor, and you can see the really really long file name in the top, and then it's about in ten uh, byte increments how big these files are. So you can see a weird kind of pattern emerging. Each of these is like AA, 5A, 01 is each different step in a cooking recipe. And then there's various bytes after that to correspond to different instructions. So the first thing we got to do is figure out how each of these weird file names corresponds to like Ben's favorite pork and rice recipe, right? So uh, I pulled a bunch of files off the phone, and I noticed the current running recipe is stored in like a secure area. Uh, it's the only thing they store securely. And I'm like, well, I don't really go, want to go through a dozen recipes. So I pulled out this SQLite database, and it had a beautiful one-to-one -one mapping of all the weird file names to the actual custom recipes or uh, recipe human-readable names. Uh, it also leaks it in Logcat, too. So now I can, uh, I know what the recipe file corresponds to, like the weird hex name, and I can actually start messing with stuff now. So first things first, I probably should have read the manual because it would have saved me like two weeks of reversing, because it turns out you can make custom recipes, and I didn't know that. And uh, what's nice about the custom recipe is they have things like heat for a period or heat to a pressure. And I was literally in a four-hour car ride with my girlfriend, and I made every variation of every single step. And then I just diffed all the files, and it was super easy. So uh, this is the only hardcore reversing part of this of the talk. But basically how it works is when you make a custom recipe, it looks for a string, and it's a bunch of if statements. So if it sees something like heat for a period, it calls for the appropriate method. And, that meth and then there's methods for every single instruction, right? And each have different integer values. And then it calls a build command. So this one, build heat for a period, throws a 14 into that build command method. And that there takes a hash map and converts that to a big giant byte array that then gets thrown into uh, the Bluetooth low energy kind of functions. And I'll get into more on this in the Austin talk. So let's look at the custom recipes. First things first, heat percentage. So at offset 0D, that's what's actually doing uh, the heating percentage. So you can see it goes 4, 8, C, and then 10 there. Right, and that's basically when you want like the little pressure cooker to stay at a certain t heating percentage. So this doesn't really do much, right? Uh, time modification is a more fun one, right? So, oh, by the way, anytime you see the little ev evil baby, that's ways you can mess with someone's recipes remotely. Um, so you could easily like take some of these pre-made ones, which we get into the attacks later on, and undercook or overcook food because you know where in the offset to change these instructions, right? So like my friend Willie's in the audience, if Willie has his favorite chicken rice recipe and it cooks for 30 minutes, I can make that cook for like one minute or like 100 minutes, right? So that's kind of fun. LED settings, I couldn't make it do any cool emojicons or anything, um, but it's just like they're at offset zero E. So other fun stuff. Whole heat to a temperature was cool. So like my first thing is like I want to make this thing blow up, right? Um, unfortunately, the max value in the GUI is 284 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is the max uh, byte value I can put in there. 
but the lowest GUI value is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's only 39 in the hex. So you could do a lower value, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, pressure, low versus high. The only officially supported values in the app is 20 and 30, but they don't do kind of any error checking, so you could kind of throw these weird values to change like weird states, and that's a, for future work too. Um, LED settings. So I talked a little about this a few slides ago. There's actually a bunch of others in here, and I'm still kind of systematically mapping out like unknown ones. So there's like none, hot, up, down. There's also like yogurt, food, and a few other weird ones, right? Um, but there's a bunch of bytes that I have to try for every instruction. Sound options. So you, if you want to play like obnoxious Game Boy sounds, here's what you change. Um, and again, you see it's weird. It's like 20, 40, 60, and then four. Um, it's not music. It's like 16-bit sound files. It's really gross. Um, so you can do that too. And the rest are just static values. So we know how to control timing, right? <laughs> we know how to control temperature. We know how to control pressure. And we know how to make obnoxious sounds, right? So like, let's do something with this. Um, so my plan to kind of prove this to you guys is I made a custom recipe with no sound, and we're going to go to a known uh, temperature. And then it's going to do other things that it shouldn't be doing. So I have a little video here. Um, do we have an audio jack, or are we going to wing it with the mic? Wing it? OK. We have an audio jack now? Don't. OK, so we're going to wing it. So I'm going to hold the mic close to this, and hopefully you guys can hear it. And if not, I'll, I'll articulate it. So. Hey, everyone. I'm hear that? Ben Actus, and here is a yes? to be oh. kind of a, a test case of the IoT pressure cooker behind me. The goal of this test case is I want to show you what the expected behavior of a custom recipe um, that has not been modified looks like. So that way, when I modify it at the next step, you can see uh, it's clearly deviated from the set instructions. So first things first, um, I have the pressure cooker synchronized over Bluetooth Low Energy with a Nexus 5 test phone right here. Um, you can see it says connected Instapot pressure cooker. Now, what I've done is I've went and made a custom recipe that's really, really simple, uh, and I'll show you right now. What I'm doing is I'm scrolling through all the recipes I've had, and I'm selecting this A Proof of Concept 3, or A POC 3. And pretty simple. All it is is going to heat to a desired temperature, um, and then stop. So, hitting start here. Um, and there's a few, so the kind of core ingredients of this recipe is heat to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason I did 86 degrees Fahrenheit is it's the lowest threshold I can set with the graphic user interface. Um, and additionally, since uh, water is kind of like at room temperature in the cooker right now, it's, we can get it to that value the quickest. So a few things I can also show you, which is kind of interesting. Um, here we can see the uh, kind of desired temperature here. Um, so it's at 84, so we should hit it really, really quick. Uh, right now it's sending this heat to 86 degrees Fahrenheit command over Bluetooth low energy. Um, if you can see it behind me, you can see like a little moving icon. It says on. There's a little rotating uh, eye symbol with a moving circular object behind it. So, boom, off. That was it. Pretty simple. It hit that degrees. Okay, so that so that's what should happen. Okay, now I mess with stuff, and you'll see different things. Uh, so again, quick things because um, it's only twenty minutes. I have to cut all, a lot of the steps, but uh, modify the files. You could e either do this in downloading or because it's on a shared directory. And I changed the attributes, and then I just threw it on the phone, and we're going to click that same recipe again. I've put some uh, new cold water in there. I've also trimmed my beard to be more handsome. Uh, and we've also pushed those files to the phone, the modified ones. So as you recall from my longer bearded video that you just saw, the 
Uh, only instruction that should happen here is that it's going to hit roughly 86 degrees and then it's going to stop. It's not going to beep, it's not going to make noise, you're not going to see any LED changes either. Um, here we are on the phone. I push the modified files at this point and you can see connected Instapot. So, now let's go back to all of our lovely recipes. Uh, I'm going to go down to my beautiful, well-known across the world proof of concept recipe. Uh, won many awards for taste. And you can see, yeah, it's been, you can see it no longer says introduction, it says modified, right? And for the little script value, sorry, inverted here, um, you can see that it says only heat to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and we should see a different temperature here. So, let's try it. So, I'm going to hit start, and boom, you see on, first off. So, I go back to my dashboard, and right now I'm waiting for this to kind of update here. So while I'm waiting to update, uh, we can go through a few kind of attack scenarios with this, right? So the first thing is, um, oh, you can see it on, and you can see cool heating level step one of three, which is really, really cool, because our original instruction was only one step. So now you can see three steps are happening. Yeah, heat to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not 86 degrees, which we put in. So boom, we can actually control stuff here. Pretty neat. Right? Um, now, a few things, right? So, we did kind of cheat a little using a rooted device, so I could easily figure out what recipe I wanted to modify. Now, if you didn't really care, you could modify all of them, right? The actual recipe files themselves are stored on that shared directory, so you could do it there. Another trick you could do is also modify it in transit when it's downloaded, because these files are just sent over plain text HTTP. It's just a zip, it doesn't check integrity, which we've obviously proved. Um, so yeah, so the good news is you can't set it at a higher temperature than what was intended, right? It still max out at 284 degrees Fahrenheit. However, you could do a lot of noxious things. You could uh, cook to lower values, you can cook to uh, play noxious sounds, you could end early. There's a lot of things you can do in that regard. Um, so yeah. All right, 122 degrees, it should stop at 125-ish. Uh, and then you're going to hear a couple beeps, and that'll be our very clear indication that this, this has been modified. Cool. See, it also says behind me, food. Uh, boop. I'm trying to point out the thing right there. <laughs> Right, that was not in the original instruction either. And this one should also, I think, wait for another minute, and that's going to make some more beeping noises behind me. So yeah, clear demonstration. We're changing the commands, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't been able to get to explode, but you could undercook food. You could change things that doesn't cook. You could ruin food. So, um, yeah, pretty neat. Um, and the fix is actually pretty easy for these guys. All they have to do is, um, you know, don't store stuff in the SD card and do things over HTTP. Anyway, thanks for that. So what else do I got here? Yeah, like I said, man in the middle, if you're a network attacker, you could mess with this a bunch. Um, the other thing I was thinking on the flight, like I could make like a pot net or like ransomware or like I ruin your food until you pay me money, um, <laughs> which could happen, right? And then based on this, I'm really hesitant how they're keeping track of state. So um, I even, I've just scratched the surface on like sending malicious BLE input to this thing. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of other things. So we have about a minute left. Uh, so I'll take questions and then for future work, uh, you could totally make a Metasploit plugin for this, which would be really cool. Um, and then I mentioned the fuzzing, the actual Bluetooth stack. So thank you for your time. I had fun. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll leave it up. Thanks. Cool.